Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be boning and butterflying a lamb shoulder, something awesome for casseroles or something great for the barbecue. For today's demo, I'm going to be using a vacuum packed piece of New Zealand lamb. Um, you can find these at most of your butcher shops, otherwise you can use a nice fresh piece. Um, just obviously communicate with your butcher, get to know them and they'll obviously sort you out with some good cuts. First things first guys, when you're boning your lamb shoulder, this is your top side and this is your bottom side. Okay, We want to flip it over and start taking these bones out. Okay, So the bones, the first bones that we're going to remove are our rib bones. So we've got four of those there. Um, when the forequarter is taken off, it is usually marked between the fourth and fifth rib, so we've got one, two, three, four ribs, and then we've got our neck bone that we also have to remove down here, okay? So, we're just going to start moving through it. Um, the knife I like to use too for one of these is a five inch bony knife, um, or something smaller, okay? It doesn't have to be exactly the same as what I'm using. Um, anything small is good, it just it makes it a little bit more agile to, break, to get through these bones. So, we've got our neck bone that runs through here, um, there's a little bit of meat that runs down here, if you want to be fussy and take that meat off, like I'm going to do, you can do that. Being a butcher, I like to use a boning grip, um, which is what I've just done there, and that's kind of holding it and pulling away from yourself. Um, I understand that not everyone has that skill, so if you do want, you can just kind of use a normal grip, hold the knife nice and lightly. You don't want to grip it too strong, and work your way around that neck. Okay, so I'm just clearing that meat off. That meat can be cut up and minced using a stir fry, and so on and so forth. Next part, uh, so we're going to take our rib bones out now, okay? So we're going to work our way down these rib bones. This is probably one of the easier bones to take out on the lamb shoulder. So I stand it up on its side, it makes it a little bit easier, okay? So when we're, I'm working down here, or if you're working down there, you're kind of, you're not having to worry too much about cutting into your meat, whereas if I was doing it this way, I'd have to cut a little bit more up. Okay, so I stand it up, and I'm just going to run down. Okay. As I'm cutting along that bone, I like to push the meat off. Okay. If I'm not pushing that meat off and it's sitting here, I could start making a mess of my lamb shoulder. Okay. So I, I kind of keep a little gap with these fingers here and push it away. And I just run down with the tip. It's always best to have a sharp knife, especially the tip of the knife if you're doing any boning. So I've gone that far. I've marked all the way down those ribs. Okay. Now all I need to do is work my way down this neck bone that sits here. So with that, this is this is where it gets a little bit trickier, okay? So if we cleared, like we did originally, we cleared that little bit of meat off, so we can kind of feel our bone along there, okay? Boning is all about feel. So when you're, when you're boning, you just want to run gently along that neck bone. Obviously with the neck and the vertebrae, it kind of can be a little bit lumpy, so don't try to force it. Again, that's where they're holding the knife in a soft grip is a lot easier. We're not putting tension on. Cool, and we've removed our neck bone and our ribs. Okay, put that over there. If you want, you can be tri you can you can you can kind of clean these out and take all the trim out. And if you want to be fussy and use that for mince, that's fine. Otherwise, you can break it and put it use as use it as a casserole. Next thing's next, guys, we want to take this bit of elastin out, okay? So this is a rubbery, chewy piece of meat that we can't use. Holds the, the animal's neck up, so that needs to come out. They reckon you can tow a car with it, so we better take it out. All right, now this is where things get a little bit trickier with the lamb shoulder. We've removed our, we've removed our four ribs and our neck. Now we need to remove the blade bone or scapula, okay? So with butchery, it's all about seam work. So what, what I mean by seam work is everything is, has connective tissue holding it together. So all we need to do is we want to, you can almost peel this bit away. Okay. You can see it peeling away there. Now what we want to do is use the tip of the knife and pull with your left hand or right hand if you're, if you're left handed. And you just want to run the knife gently along without cutting into your meat. Okay. Just like that. As we do that, we only want to go, we still want to leave it attached to the meat. But you can see there we've opened up that muscle now. Now we can see the bottom of our blade bone is there. Okay, so we know where that bone ends. And we can see the top of our little bone there. Okay, so all you need to do now is first of all, I'm going to trim a little bit of fat off before I do this. Up to you if you want to leave this fat in. 
I usually take a little bit out. And we have a gland that sits in there that we want to remove. Okay, try to take this off obviously without taking too much meat. Cool, that's that out. So now we're going to take our scapula or blade bone out. Okay, so first, again, a little bit more seam work. We're just going to remove some of these little bits to free it up so we know where our bone is. Obviously, I've done this a lot of times, so I know where the bone is, um, but for you guys doing it first time or second time, um, it, it does take a little bit of getting used to. So, I like to clear the top of this bone first. So what I'm going to do is to tip my knife, okay, and clear the top of that bone. Now it's kind of opening things up. So you can see the side of that bone. Now what we're going to do is clear the other side, as such. Now the back. So I'm just kind of working my way around this now. Now we know where that is. Okay, so now we can see that bone. Now what I'm going to do is run my knife flat. So the blade bone runs through here. So all we need to do is clear the top of that bone. Once we clear the top of that meat off the top of the bone, we can really see it so you know what we're working with. Okay, so just cutting a little bit in. Again, if you don't know where it is, just feel for it. Okay, once you find it, I'm just gonna run the tip and kind of scratch the top of that bone. Okay, if you're using this grip, it's fine, you can do the same thing. Still leaving all that meat attached. So now we can see that we have our blade bone and a little bit of bone there connected up top too. So we can see everything that we're working with, okay? So now, now that we can see what we're working with, you have one side that curves around, then on a kind of a straighter angle, and then one side that kind of goes on a bit more of a looping angle there. All we want to do is we want to run down the side, just the side, with the tip of the knife. If we go too deep, we're going to stuff this up. So just really use the tip of your knife, okay? and clear it like that. That's all we need to do for now. Now all I'm going to do is on the other side, I'm just going to go halfway down. So use the tip. That's all you need to go. Stop there. I'm going to show you why in a second. So, we're just going to clear it around the back of that bone. Still leaving this bone attached. You can do this another way by taking this bone out, but that's fine. I'm going to do it this way today. So I've cleared all the way around the back. That bone, that top little bone there, has all the meat cleared off around the back of it. Okay, And then all I need to do is just cut down the back till I hit the, the back of the blade bone there. Okay, And then all I'm going to do is just mark it. Just running my knife up it, that's it. So we've cleared that top bone, that's all out. Now all we have left is our blade bone. Okay, So we could just go ahead and start hacking through it and kind of taking out it as is. I'm going to show you a much cleaner, easier way that we get all the meat off, okay? So, we've cleared that. Now all I'm going to go is all I'm going to do is go down that straight side that we cleared originally. And I'm just going to make, and this is very important, just scratch literally scratching with the tip of your knife. Make it a little mark. That's all you need to do. Now we can put the knife away for this one. And then all we want to do, the reason I leave this bone on is so that we got a bit to grab on. We're going to push down and we're going to pull that bone out. Okay. Nice bit of force, like you just felt it pop there. And then all we're going to do is peel it out, just like that. Okay. That last little bit, of, that last little bit of cartilage that's sitting there, we just want to run down with our knife and just take that off. Okay. And that's how you get it off clean. Um, I mean, pretty much most of the meat is off that, so we're sweet, good to go. That comes out. So those are the last two bones that we've just taken out of our lamb shoulder. So now what we need to do is go through, um, originally we did clean a little bit of that fat up and we took a little gland out, okay? So just double check, you wanna take any of these little gristly bits out before butterflying it. So now that we've taken our bones out, we just need to go through and check any extra fat, excessive fat that we wanna take out. Um, we've already kinda of taken a bit of it out. Um, we've taken that gland that sits in there out. But if you do wanna take a little bit more fat out, that's fine. Go along, trim anything out, okay? This is, like I said, we're lucky enough that in New Zealand we have very lean, um, great lambs to work with, so that you shouldn't need to trim too much off. 
if you've got something again if you've got mutton or if you've got something a little bit fattier than you you might need to trim a little bit out now that's pretty much everything trimmed out um, now all we're going to do is butterfly so butterflying is I guess is just making the surface all one even playing field um, if we have one end that's kind of thinner than the other obviously that end's going to cook a little bit faster so all we want to do is kind of piece our lamb shoulder together and by butterflying we're just kind of shaping that meat into one even consistent shape if you do if you do need to trim a little bit off this one's this one's come out pretty good so it's pretty even you might only need to kind of do a few little cuts like I've done there and that's pretty much good that's pretty much good to go I'd say so very nice and simple sometimes you might have one end that is quite thick so you may need to make a little incision or a little cut and fold that over um, but yeah shot this shoulder is is one to one very good one to work with so before cooking, I always do like to make a little mix up of olive oil, garlic and um, rosemary and brush that on. And I'll usually cook it on a high temp for around 45 minutes with direct heat, okay? Um, these are a great summer idea or even winter idea. You can still throw these in the casserole crock pot um, or like I said, you can barbecue them and they're super tender, super tasty. So definitely one to try. Mm -hmm.